Hi everyone, Leanne here from Jaded Blossom and I have another St. Patrick's Day card to share with you today. Hey everybody, so I am using our St. Patrick's Day candies, our gnome dyes, the St. Patrick's Day add-ons, the plain gnome dyes, and our mushroom dyes. So I went ahead and I pulled out these St. Patrick's Day candy dies or candy, candy stamp set grid style and I'm going to cut apart the little shamrocks. Nobody was hurt during this. You can stick them back together and use them as one. Um, I am doing uh, a Jennifer McGuire box, box pop card. So this is not my idea. This is just my take on it. She came up with the whole thing. So I, I just thought th this would be a really cute way to display the new St. Patrick's Day gnome and gnome you know, on the front of a card is is using this um, St. Patrick's Day, um, I'm sorry, using this box pop card from uh, Jennifer McGuire. So first of all, I have a piece of Paper Tray Ink Green Parakeet cardstock cut at 4.25 by 11 inches, scored at five and a half inches to give me a vertical A2 sized card. Now I use my Martha Stewart scoreboard and my Teflon bone folder. Now I'm pulling out inks from Altenew, and these are Olive, Just Green, and Hunter Green. And I'm going to randomly stamp these on the background of my card. Now you wanna be careful because the edges of these stamps aren't trimmed close to the stamp, so it can pick up ink. I do make a couple of mistakes. I'm able to stamp over them. But basically I'm just doing a randomly stamped background on this green cardstock. So this was very, very easy. This is sped up a bit. Um, just because, you know, you know, I, I take the solid one, I do a few stampings in, in each color, and then I move on to the outlines. And I just quickly stamp. You'll notice that I've got a one of those um styrofoam mats underneath. Um, you know, that some people use as you know foam um, dimension on cards. I just have a thick one that I do stamping on when I'm doing freehand stamping with an acrylic block. And um, I just find that it, it allows you to get better, I don't know, better contact with your stamp, whatever. Um, so that's why I use it. So like I said, randomly stamped background. This is not rocket science. I'm just trying to spread it around. Um, yeah, so easy stuff. So I watched this video um, made by Jennifer McGuire the other day, and she did a video where she did three uh, box pop cards. You got to check out her her channel on YouTube. It's amazing. Um, Jennifer, I think it's called Jennifer McGuire Inc. Um, you just want to follow her and, you know, press notifications so you know when to watch her next video because she comes up with these great techniques. And I learn a lot um, creating, you know, card making and stuff, um, different card folds and things from Jennifer McGuire. She she's really good at what she does. So anyway, she came she came up with this box pop idea, and then I saw it and I thought, hmm, that would be perfect with the gnome dies from Jada Blossom. So that's what I decided to do. So there we go. I'm almost done my um, stamping of my background, and like I'm just trying to make a random stamp background. Now you could have used pattern paper back here. But I thought, you know what, she did a random stamp background and I thought in the back of my mind I was thinking of these stamps from the new St. Patrick's Day Candies grid style stamp set. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to use that. So I'm almost done here. Now, of course, I get some ink because I've got ink on my fingers, you'll notice. I get some ink on the bottom of uh, the box, part, box uh, pop part. And I end up continuing the stamping on that. I don't show you it, but I do stamp some on the bottom of, of the little box just to hide my boo-boo. So now I've got a piece of cardstock. This is four and a quarter by five inches, and I'm going to score it at three quarters of an inch, one and a quarter, one and three quarters of an inch, three and th a quarter inch, and then four and a quarter inch. So Teflon bone folder. Martha Stewart scoreboard, the same color of cardstock as the card base. And then I'm just going to quickly use my Teflon bone folder to fold it, score all the edges in, get it all folded nicely. There we go. So I am going to apply tape, HEG tape, to the bottom of this little box. 
making sure it lines up perfectly, which it does. And I'm going to see I did some random stamping on the bottom there because there was some ink. I made a mess on there, so I had to cover up my boo-boos. There we go. So now I'm going to line up this one on the bottom. So you see the, that little fold, you wanna line it up on the bottom of this card base. There we go. So now we're lined up, right? And then you're going to apply ink to the top little piece of this. And then you're going to fold it back in until it lines up with the other one like a box. I'm trying to show you what I'm doing from the side, but watch Jennifer McGuire's video. She's much better explaining it than me. But um, the idea is, is this C, you're gonna line up those two so they fit perfectly against each other. They don't cover each other, they, the seam lines up perfectly. And then we're going to stick it down. And then you'll notice that box will move upward and fold flat into a card. But it will it will allow what you put on front of it to have a lot of dimension. So I went ahead and I cut a piece of cardstock, that dark green cardstock. Um, I believe that Simon Says Stamp. I'll have it listed on my blog. I cut out a piece that's four and a quarter inches wide, and then I used my um, grass die from the mushroom dies, and I cut it um, at about one and a half inches tall. And I'm going to just line it up with the bottom of this little box. And then this is going to be my little grass layer that's going to be in front. And that's what I'm going to attach my gnome to. Now, I could have attached it right to the box, but I wanted to have the little um, grass hill. So I'm trying to decide which gnome I'm going to use. But I went ahead and I stamped out the sentiment from that same St. Patrick's Day Candy's Grid Style stamp, stamp set. And I stamped it onto green American Crafts cardstock, cut it out with the mini, mini tag dies three. All my die cutting today was done with my Gemini machine. And I'm going to line that up in the center of the grass. There we go. I've decided I'm gonna use the, the gnome with the little um, fun little hat. There we go. Just because when it's folded, you want that gnome not to extend past the top of your card base. That way everything fits into an A2 sized card, um, A2 envelope, A2 sized envelope. Blah, 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 blah. And like I said, this is all Jennifer McGuire's idea, not mine. But you know, she teaches really well, so you gotta go watch her videos. So now I'm going to line up this gnome. Now this gnome I put together during my release and review of Jada Blossom's February mini St. Patrick's Day release at the beginning of the month. And there we go, how cute is that? Look at all that dimension, like it's amazing. So I did stamp um, a sentiment from Lucky Charm, cut it out with the outline die. Um, onto Nina uh, Solar White cardstock. I'm going to quickly apply a one inch strip of Doodlebug's Pot of Gold 12 inch paper line. I'm going to apply that one inch strip to the inside of my card just for a little something something, you know. I'm going to make sure it's flattened down with my Teflon bone folder. I'm going to trim off the overhang, there we go. And then I will add in my little sentiment Happy St. Patrick's Day. That is from that uh, Lucky Charm stamp set and the outline dies. Th those are new from Jada Blossom, or new in February 2022 anyway. And I'm going to make sure, <laughs> make sure it's straight because, you know, I'm challenged when it comes to that kind of stuff. That's why I'm putting it on, taking it off. There we go. So how darn cute is that? Everything will be listed on my blog that I used today. So don't feel like you got to scramble. And you can certainly go and watch Jennifer, Jennifer McGuire um, create one of these cards and she'll teach you much better than I. But I'm using Jada Blossom products, so that makes it a little bit more fun, right? So now I'm using glossy accents in my Studio Catty embellishment wand to add some sequins. I don't know where they're from, but they're green and gold sequins. It was a mix uh, that I had, and it's a golden oldie. I have no idea where it came from, because for some reason I didn't label them. But they're just plain sized gold and green sequins. And I'm just going to stick them down, like I said, using glossy accents. That's a, that's a nice, really strong adhesive. And I'm just sort of sprinkling them around, you know, having a nice little set up here trying to make your you know move your eye around the card stuff like that i actually thought of rounding the upper card corners you can leave me a comment if you think i should have i don't know part of me wanted to round them but i decided to you know leave it as is 
I think it turned out pretty darn cute anyway. There we go. I'm going to add another little sprinkle there onto the gnome, gnome himself, itself. There we go. How cute is that? Like, I just think this is just the cutest little thing. So now I pulled out my favorite. This is Nouveau Crystal Drops in Mustard Gold. And I'm going to apply a few little droplets to this. You want them warm when you apply them, just so they dome up nice. And I'm going to add a few to the card base themselves, and then I'll add a few to the center of the seek, a few of the sequins, just you know, for some, for something different, to make it look a, you know, a little more special, right? And there we are. And I just, I love this card. I think I'm going to be making these cards more. This is a great idea, like I said, from Jennifer McGuire. She comes up with great ideas, and she's, you know. She makes these really cool folds that, that always amaze me. And every once in a while, I like them so much that I add them into my repertoire of card making. And I think this is going to be one of them. And there we go. Like, how cute is that? Like, I just think it turned out great. So thank you so much for stopping by. Be sure to hop on over to the Jada Blossom blog. I get inspired. Run on over to the Jada Blossom store and get some of these dyes. And maybe check out Jennifer McGuire on YouTube because she is amazing. And thank you so much as always for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. And we will see you soon in my next one. Bye everyone.